Hello ladies and gents of YouTube. I am so excited to be doing this right now. As you can see, I have a beautiful new theme for my uh, XMB, and the theme is for a game called Heavy Rain. And I'm playing this because I'm halfway through a really long epic playthrough of the game Dark Souls, which I had never played before, and um, I'm having a really good adventure with it. Only it's a very, very hard game, and uh, there's a lot of backtracking through areas you've already been through, and a lot of fighting the same guys over and over again. And right now I'm stuck on a boss called Smo and Ornstein, and uh, it's just like the most evil boss ever, and I don't feel like going on any further. For now. I mean, I do. I am going to finish the LP, but I just need to take a short break, and um, I'm going to play this game called Heavy Rain, which matches... Uh, the background that you just saw for my XMB, and I have a little bit of a clue what it's about, but not really. My friend recommended it to me, and it's going to be an adventure, so here we go. I have no idea what's coming up. I've never loaded this before. I hope that uh, it doesn't totally rock my socks too much. I guess uh, there's a patch for it, which I probably should have... Um, downloaded prior to recording, but downloading the patch is actually going to give me some time to talk about what I do know about this game, which should be good. I'm just going to wait and see uh, if the patch is too big. The patch is 16 minutes. Oh boy. Okay, it says 13 minutes, so maybe it's downloading faster than it thought it was going to. But in any case, the reason why I am playing this, other than um, being tired of Dark Souls, is one of my favorite games of all time is the Walking Dead game by Telltale. I recommend that if you haven't played it yet, you absolutely, definitely check it out. It's such a good game. It's all story-based, and it comes in five episodes. But the five episodes are really one long, continuous story. And it's only like 20 bucks or something to play uh, the entire five episodes. You can download it from the PlayStation Network, and there's a PlayStation 4 version that comes on a disc and everything if you like physical media for your games. But that's a game based on AMC's television show, The Walking Dead. And it really takes place... I've actually never seen AMC's television show, The Walking Dead. But this game takes place during a zombie apocalypse. And at the beginning of the game, like, the zombie apocalypse hasn't hit yet. Life is happening completely as normal. You're playing as uh, this black guy who's, uh, you know, not too old, but um, he's a college professor who teaches at uh, the university, I don't know which school, like some school in Athens, Georgia, which um, I know is a famous college town, famous for lots of schools. So uh, the story of the game is you're being transported in the back of a police car, and you appear to have been convicted of murder and be going to jail. And uh, the officer in the front seat is questioning you about like whether you did it, and then um, he runs into like a zombie who's like walking in the middle of the road and the car skids out of control and then um, it crashes and you crawl out of the wreckage of the car. Download completed. Heavy Rain the Taxidermist. Yeah, this, um, this game actually has DLC so I went ahead and uh, queued up that download before I started recording this. So um, that's good. I don't know if the DLC is incorporated into the main story or if it's something that you actually have to play through after you've beaten the game. But, uh, anyway, I was talking about Walking Dead, yeah, and, uh, you crawl out of the wreckage of a car crash, and then, um, the police officer who is sitting in the front seat turns into a zombie, and you actually, like, you're, you have, you have, like, your hands are still in handcuffs, and you have to actually, like, uh, grab his gun... Or maybe you grab an axe. I don't remember, but um, you kill the police officer who uh, was transporting you, and then you walk out uh, onto the street and everything is chaos, and you don't know how long um, zombies have been like rampaging through Georgia. They have just appeared in your town, but in other towns they've been uh, causing problems for longer. And uh, you crawl into a house for help. And there's a photo of a little girl, and uh, the little girl's parents are away, and they left a message on the answering machine saying that, uh, you know, giving instructions for, like, the babysitter. Okay, I guess I can't really describe this um, game by, like, walking you through the entire story, but the point is that, like, um, there are a ton of choices, and what you have to do in this game, The Walking Dead, is um, assemble a team of survivors of the original wave of the apocalypse to try to... Uh, band together and uh, stockpile existing resources 
and uh, like find a place to live and find a way to like uh, fend off the zombies. And the game gives you choices and depending on which choices you make, you assemble a team full of like different members and there are people you run into who either love or hate you depending on uh, how you treat them. And uh, the main characters are Lee, this teacher, and Clementine who is a little girl who was a uh, whose parents have been uh, away on a business trip when the zombie apocalypse hits and uh, her parents are presumed dead. And you basically have to um, shepherd this little girl through like, you know, the aftermath of a zombie apocalypse when everyone is like uh, fighting each other for food and ammo and shelter and, uh, you know, normal society is broken down. And just based on how good the game is, I really want to see the TV show now, even though I'm not really that into TV. And, yeah, it's just, like, really thrilling, and, uh, the choices you make have, like, some effect. I kind of think, I mean, I've played the game a couple times, so I've kind of seen some of the alternate consequences of your choices, and I kind of think one of the drawbacks of that game, uh, the Walking Dead, Dead game, is that the game presents the illusion that the choices you make have more effect than they actually have. Like, um... The path of the game, the story might diverge depending on like whether you choose to join this character or that character for like a mission when you're scrounging for supplies, but eventually like the alternate th strands reconverge. So like you're kind of pinned down to one narrative. And uh, the reason I'm playing this game is I was talking to one of my friends about how good the Walking Dead game is, and he said you absolutely, if you like that game, you'll love Heavy Rain. You absolutely have to track down this game called Heavy Rain and play it. It's great. It's everything that The Walking Dead kind of isn't. Because this is another story-based game where, like, instead of fighting action style, you make choices which dictate the outcome of the story. But, um, the way that this game works is there are no puzzles to get stuck on. The story just keeps moving forward. This is according to my, to my friend's description. I haven't actually played it myself. And, uh, the choices you make can lead to wildly different outcomes and you can get like a completely different story than someone else who plays the game. But the story has like a fixed beginning and then it has multiple different possible ends and the way you get there is up to you. And um, I'm really looking forward to playing a story-based game similar to The Walking Dead, only where your choices have real consequences. And also supposedly this game is really gory and really scary and has very high production values and amazing graphics and uh, it probably won't have amazing graphics here because I'm recording it on a digital camera because I still cannot get my video capture card to work. I have a microphone for it. I have a PC with specs that should theoretically be able to run it. But whenever I try to record live audio and record the video of me playing, it just doesn't work. I think that I'm having memory problems with my PC or whatever, but um, if I use the built-in audio, you know, capture software, then the audio is like out of sync with the action on the screen. It completely ruins everything. And if I try to open a separate program like Audacity to record audio simultaneously with recording video, then everything like, you know, freezes and lags. It's just not I mean, I might have to buy a brand new PC just to record these Let's Plays, because I want to make them. I want them to be good. I want them to look good. But I have my desktop set up, which is my main computer in my office. I do not want to move that to my game room and unplug everything and not be able to sit at my computer desk with a keyboard drawer and both of my monitors set up and all my printer and stuff set up in my office until I'm completely done and completely move it back and reconnect it, because it's just... it's too much work. So I don't know whether I need a desktop or a new laptop or like a, a separate computer that's brand new and has like no other programs installed on it and no other memory, nothing else competing with uh, the capture software for memory in order to properly record LPs. But I'm digressing. Uh, yeah, so what I know about Heavy Rain is basically like it's got amazing graphics and uh, it's really gory and it can be like really horrifying, but it has like a mystery plot line. And, uh, it starts off, off with a family man whose life is basically pretty good. And then, but my friend was very vague about what happens because he didn't want to spoil even the beginning, but this person's life completely goes to hell. And you have to try to pick up the pieces. And this sounds like exactly the type of story that I would love because um, I love movies about characters that are sympathetic characters, but like bad things happen to them or characters who are normal people and become unsympathetic characters because bad things happen to them. And um, 
just like psychological thrillers and dramas. One of my favorite directors is David Lynch. I love all of his work. I love uh, Adrian Lyne. I love, um, yeah, like some of the uh, thriller directors, even like David Mamet. Um, I loved his movie Edmund, if you've seen that. Um, I just love, yeah, movies about characters who are like psychologically pushed to the limit. Gaspar Noé, Unbreakable was great. I Stand Alone was an amazing movie. Uh, so I'm kind of expecting a story that's almost a little bit like that. And I really want to know what the best story-based game that's ever been released is going to look like. I'm way late to the party with this game. I'm recording this in October of 2015. And this game came out in 2010. And uh, I guess the studio that released this game is kind of famous and kind of known as like one of the best like European video game developers. And uh, whatever they're doing is in the news and it's kind of a big deal. So I'm glad that I've been playing video games for five years without having like somebody spoil this story for me. But um, I'm just really looking forward now that I'm, I'm aware of it to sharing my first experience ever with this game with you guys in the audience and uh, just allowing you to see what happens along with me and uh, we'll experience it together. I've kind of run out of things to talk about and this download screen is still downloading. I could talk about Dark Souls for a little longer, I guess. Uh, Dark Souls is really one of the best RPGs I've ever played, and it's the most challenging RPG probably that I've ever played. I played Persona 4 when that came out in 2008, and I played it on hard mode on my first playthrough, because right out of the box there's the option to play on hard mode, and on hard mode that was a very challenging RPG. But I think that Dark Souls is actually it's not as long, it doesn't seem like it's going to be as long of a game, I haven't finished it yet, as Persona 4. But um, it's more of the type of the game, that, uh, the type of a game that you really get stuck on compared to Persona 4. Uh, but I was just saying Persona 4 is po possibly the only RPG that I've played that could give Dark Souls a run for its money as like a potentially more challenging RPG, but it's a totally different type of game. It's challenging in totally different ways. Um, Persona 4 is challenging because in hard mode, like, the enemies can one-hit kill you, and, uh, you have to, like, equip your team with better weapons and armor and, uh, get more money and stuff, but it, Im it implies, like, a really ingenious system that limits how much you can grind, because the entire game takes place, um, on a calendar system, and you only have a limited amount of real time to play out every single, like, day of game time, and, uh, on certain days of game time, you have to be ready to kill the next boss. Um, or else, I guess you can actually grind on, like, the day of game time when you're supposed to fight the next boss. But, um, you really have, like, limited opportunities to spend the time, the in-game time, on the calendar wisely. As you struggle to just get through a school year in the life of uh, this Japanese high school student who's uh, living in a small rural town. And that's like a really mysterious story. I'm talking about good video games because I'm so psyched to be playing this one and I have such high expectations about this one. I hope it doesn't disappoint. So um, playing this is making me think of hard video games I've played and good video games I've played. And I assume this game is not going to be hard at all because uh, it's just such a high production value game, it would kind of be like pointless for them to make it like hard, like people get stuck on it and don't get to experience the entire game. You know, because uh, it's almost like if you've played PlayStation games back in the 90s, when cutscenes were a big deal and games came on disc and some games were two discs or three discs, you could always tell like on an RPG whether you were on the main storyline or on, as part of a side quest by whether there were any cutscenes because developers who did add extra challenges to their game, like extra bosses, extra dungeons, extra plot lines that tell you more about the characters, there used to be like this tendency, right, for these games to only have cutscenes play when you were doing something necessary to the story, like something that every player would see on every playthrough of the game. So if you were in an area with cutscenes, you knew that you'd like move to the main storyline along, and uh, if you wanted to do all the subplots first and the side quests, then you needed to uh, stop what you were doing and uh, go somewhere else that wasn't triggering cutscenes. 
I mean, uh, that was kind of my own personal litmus test because I used to try to do everything in every game I played, like before beating the final boss, and uh, at some point I realized that trying to be a completionist in that sense was stupid because it just ruins the enjoyment of the game because these games contain a lot of extra content to have fun with, but they were really designed with the first time experience in mind. So now I'm playing games in a different mentality where I make it more just about my first time experience and I'm even doing these live recordings of my first time with these games because I want to share them with you. And uh, I want you to be able, if you're watching this, to see what my first time experience is like with a game like Dark Souls, with a game like Heavy Rain. So, um, yeah, if you actually want to make sure you don't miss anything in an RPG before, like, completing the main story, then you have to look stuff up in a strategy guide, because you don't know what you're missing until you look at what you're missing, right? And then you're going to see stuff other than what you're trying to look up, and you're going to end up spoiling parts of the game for yourself. I have finally installed this game. I am ready. Audio language English. Subtitles on. Yes, I absolutely want the subtitles because uh, I am recording this with a camcorder. So I'm having to speak into the camcorder to give my commentary, but the game audio is also coming from the TV speakers live. So they're both competing for sound. And in order to make my commentary audible, it, I'm, obvious, I'm obviously going to have to speak louder than the game. The TV is playing the game, so we're going to need subtitles in order for everyone to be, including me, to be able to know what the characters are saying. The menu is in... <laughs> wow, there's a lot of options. Is the audio... The audio can be English, French, Spanish, Portuguese. I'm sure they took up a lot of extra disk space, including all these extra audio tracks. Subtitles, English. Menu, English. Next. Please, please adjust the brightness slider until the origami is barely visible. I had the same problem in Dark Souls. I turned the brightness all the way up, and I could still barely, barely see, like, into the distance in uh, some of the dark dungeons of the game. And I think that uh, in that game, darkness is part of the challenge of the game, so you actually ruin it for yourself if you make it too bright. But in this game, like, I still can't see the origami on my screen. Alright, I'm going to turn it all the way up to make the origami obvious so you can see it. It looks like an origami duck. And now I'm going to turn it down again until I can barely see it, because I want the proper brightness. But um, I might make my video just a little bit brighter on YouTube for the final version to compensate for uh, YouTube darkening it. Alright, next. Difficulty. I play video games fairly often. I am perfectly familiar with the wireless controller. Quite regularly, I am familiar. I play occasionally, I am not familiar. I'm going to choose very often and perfectly familiar because uh, this looks like the maximum difficulty. And even though this is my first playthrough and I want like a virgin experience, I also want to run a risk of like um, failing at stuff. So I'm going to go with this. Heavy rain is being installed. This will take a few minutes. Please do not turn off the system until the process is completed. In the meantime, take out the square paper sheet in the game box, then press X. I'm not going to show you that on camera because um, I am recording this in a dark room just so the colors are not messed up. And uh, just trying to do everything as well as I can do it. I am going to try to take advantage of this opportunity to get my camera as straight as possible. That might look a little straighter. It is kind of hard to tell. This camera has a lot of problems. One problem is that uh, you have to point it slightly higher than where you actually want the recording because the viewfinder that's linked to the preview window actually does not show you the same thing that the lens is seeing. The lens is positioned slightly off-center. Hopefully that is centered and everything will be good. I'm going to press X just to, to see what happens. These are instructions for how to fold an origami so you can make an origami figure while waiting for uh, the installation. <coughs> fold back and forth along the other diagonal line. Okay. Turn the square, fold back the upper point. I hope that this game is pausable because I need to periodically like change the battery in my uh, camera. 
Fold the four new points into the center. I really think I'm getting better at giving commentary without having my voice sound super stuffy all the time and also without like stuttering and tripping over words. I haven't been doing this for very long, but when I started doing it with Dark Souls, I wasn't expecting to enjoy the game as much as I did, to be honest. I'm enjoying it a lot, so now I'm really into playing games just for the sake of playing games. But when I originally did it, the reason I wanted to do it was because I thought that it was going to be really great practice for later. Because I wanted to make, um, and I'm still going to make, some other vlogs and other types of videos. Besides game footage. I'm going to adjust my camera just a little bit more. Hopefully that'll be good. If it's not, there's nothing I can do about it. But, um, yeah, I was recording these LPs so I could practice just having to speak into the camera and become more fluid instead of, like, tripping over what I intended to say in my mind and reaching for words and not being able to grasp words because when you're reaching and you can't grasp, you're kind of SOL. And I watch a lot of YouTubers who do vlogs and who do, um, like, alternative media and uh, are always talking about things on YouTube, on their channels, and they are capable of just turning the camera on and recording a 45-minute video where they give a speech that they haven't written down and haven't memorized, and they're not looking at notes. They just kind of mentally prepared by thinking intensely about what they intended to talk about. And then they talk for like 45 minutes, like without losing track of what they're saying and without having to remember which point they haven't brought up yet and which point they, you know, have brought up already. And uh, some of them are better than others, but all in all, they're really, really good. I would like to be as good as them, and I aspire to be as good as them, and I don't think I ever will be as good as them, because they're really, really good. So I'm going to be as good as I can be, and that involves practicing with this, and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to playing this game. This game, since it's kind of modeled after The Walking Dead, I don't expect it to be anywhere near as long as Dark Souls. I think I'm going to play through this whole game in like two days. I'll probably record tonight and then I'll record again tomorrow and just play all night, both nights, and hopefully that'll give me enough time to finish it. And then I'll get back to Dark Souls and finish that. And uh, hopefully playing through this game will relax me enough that Dark Souls will seem fun again. I mean, it never stopped seeming fun, but right now I'm just, I'm way under leveled and there's no easy way to gain levels other than to grind. I'm sure if I were a master at playing the game, then I'd be able to get past the boss that I'm stuck on now, like, without leveling up at all, or even at, like, a lower level. But, um, that would involve playing through earlier parts, like, understanding exactly which progression path I wanted to get my character on, and finding all of the right equipment, and, uh, just mastering the system. And since I was doing a find-out-as-you-go-along run, I didn't get a chance to do that. But I also didn't want to just grind, because that's boring to watch on camera, and I wanted to do an uncut, you know, LP of the full game. So I kind of got myself to a certain point where now I need to either grind or know more information, and I haven't done either, so uh, I'm going to probably compromise. I'm probably going to um, go back and explore some areas where I've already been and see if there's anything new, but not just run around in circles and grind, just kill stuff once and uh, just try to uh, run to every corner of the fictitious kingdom where this game takes place. Dark Souls takes place in a kingdom called Lordran. It's super dark and uh, almost everyone is completely depressed out of their minds. And uh, it's a really neat kingdom. It's a really wonderful game. And uh, there's like this curse of the undead where people are undeads, and then when they die after becoming undeads, they're not really dead, they just keep coming back to life, but, uh, their features deteriorate, like, physically, they look like zombies, the more and more they get killed, and, uh, the implication from the dialogue in the game is that, like, their constitution deteriorates. It's kind of like, if you would, a lot of philosophers have theorized that if you were to live forever, then you would go insane, and, uh, it seems like people have been trapped in this kingdom forever without being able to die and without being just being constantly at odds with the hostile environment and the cold winds and all the other people who have already gone insane, just like trying to kill them and just having to fight them over and over and over again. Um, so that's what the story seems to be about. And uh, there are like very little, very few cutscenes. 
and uh, the story is just told through like tiny little clues and I haven't even read like half of the item descriptions. Okay, this game is courteous, courteous enough to tell you Heavy Rain is now installed. Press the start button to play and that's great because um, if it didn't tell me that, then it would just be starting when I'm still talking. And it doesn't want you to miss it in case you went to like the uh, fridge to get a drink. So I am excited. I hope you're excited. Let's start playing Heavy Rain.